Welcome to KOTV Classics. In this episode, we've been digging deep in our archives for your enjoyment and have pulled out some classic bouts and the greatest fighters of all time in The Boxing Files. So many fighters like Steve Collins here. The glitch goes Mike Tyson, James Tony, all sorts. But he's got a soft spot for Khan. He believes he can uh, make the critics eat their words. That he will rebuild him and that he will become a world champion is tonight the night. He's had 24 of them already, Freddie Roach. Yeah, well, if this continues. You can add another one to the list, and no signs that it shouldn't. How can Andreas Katelnik turn this around? Once or twice he's got through, especially with the right hand. But Khan's so sensible and getting out of trouble with his hands high. And any worries we had about uh, Amir Khan over the longer distance fight? Well, I think we can just count those. Now, these are just going to don't hit me punches he's throwing at the moment, but uh, they're stopping Katelnik from setting anything up. Out of range, just landing on the gloves, but Katelnik not allowed to do anything. Wild swings now. It's a body shot and a left hook to the head from Katelnik. It's few and far between. He's trying to walk Khan down. But his work rate, well, it's miles behind Khan's. See, he's not an aggressive fighter. He's not used to cornering fighters in, in, in the ropes. He's not used to this kind of opponent. He's usually the one posing the problems. Well, tonight, Khan's the one posing all the problems, and Katelnik can't solve them out. There's a right hand, though. Khan just leaving his chin unprotected. I'm again! I'm again! Surely this will be Michael Tim's plan for Katelnik to really start motoring about now. Body shots. But the trouble is, there's no signs of Khan's pace slowing. You really would have expected in the eighth round here that Khan would have started to dip a little bit, but he's not. His legs are so strong, he's been allowed to box at his own pace, so he's looking so comfortable. Katelnik coming on. Trying the hooks, but look at that from Khan. Body a weaving and back with blistering speed. He is enjoying it tonight, Amir Khan. Well, there's a maturity about his performance tonight. I mean, it's as though he, in front of our eyes he's become a man. He's not a 22 year old kid anymore. Tremendous stuff. Four rounds to go. And if this is the acid test, he is answering all those questions, Amir Khan. Body shots, that's what Freddie Roach wanted to see. Can Katelnik impose himself? Can he get lucky? Khan just not allowing Katelnik to set anything up. As soon as he tries to get himself set, the jabs are coming, even if he blocks them, it's preventing him from getting anything going. Circling again, Khan. Fitness and stamina look good for now. Vitalnik just looks at his corner as if to say, I'm doing everything I know, and it's not working. And it's also good to see Khan not afraid to grab up close, just to see himself through a little crisis. 
Paul with the left hook there, but again, taking the punch, he's bang on the chin, and he took that one too. Yes, he did. And that was flash from Kotelnik. He believed that not having to grind down to nine stone nine might help his punch resistance as well, Khan. Yeah, well, you're naturally heavier when you're not boiling, so sorry, naturally healthier when you're not boiling down to weight. And that's how this looks. He looks so strong, so mature. And the way he switches onto defensive mode instantly is really impressive. I think that's been drilled into him by Freddie Roach. Yeah, Freddie Roach likes the natural weight, doesn't he? And then Manny Pacquiao against Oscar De La Hoya. Katelnik still trying to target the body, still putting everything into it. He's just a move or five moves behind Khan. Yeah, he's still looking strong though, Katelnik. Although he's frustrated, as, it, as, as you can expect. He's still winding up the big shots. He's not giving up on this title yet. Just as he does that, the repulse from Khan is spot on. He's answered just about everything. Every little bit of success that Katelnik has found, Khan has answered it immediately. Good defence from the Olympic silver medalist from 2004. And maybe Katelnik's getting tired. He's been around the game nine years. And is this new blood coming through in Khan? She's again not finding the target. That one did. Some of Khan's close-knit family on their feet there. Nassim Hamad at ringside trying to beckon Khan in. Hamad, the youngest world champion at 21 since the war. Khan will be number three if he pulls this off. Herbie Hyde, the other. He just seems to have so much still in the tank, Khan. I think that's a key point, Jim, you've made about the legs that Alex Ariza, the conditioner, has worked on. So much power in them tonight. Well, he's pushing Katelnik back now. They use the word maturity in some of the earlier rounds, and that's, that, that's what we're seeing from him here. Left hook from Katelnik. Again, attempts to close that range down, make Khan stand and fight. Just as he does that, the repulse from Khan is spot on. He's answered just about everything. Every little bit of success that Katelnik has found, Khan has answered it immediately. Good defence from the Olympic silver medalist from 2004. And maybe Katelnik's getting tired. He's been around the game nine years. And is this new blood coming through in Khan? It's been brilliantly executed so far from Amir Khan. And look at the way he gets straight down to work at the beginning of the 11th. Jim, there was all the talk in the build-up about the mega fights against Marquez and Mayweather, and he wondered if he'd take his mind off the job, but... He's kept it on it here. He certainly has, and he took another full-bodied right hand there. And still able to come back with his response. Stay tight, stay tight. A couple of the fighters in the wild card, Dean Byrne and Craig McEwen, were telling me he gets a bit macho in sparring, dropping his hands, trying to prove he's got a chin. Not looked in a... A lot of trouble tonight in that department. He's taken a few and come back. Yeah, but he's also learning how to nullify up close. These are things he's never had to do for most of his career. So you can see the difference that the Roach experience has made for him.
Largely good defence, but Katelnik just pushes Khan back. Trying to use that natural 10 stone weight. Late on in the fight. Katelnik's winding punches up now, just trying to get lucky with one of these right hands. Right hand and a left to the temple. Again, Khan stands firm. Well, this is the desperation we expected to see from Katelnik. Again, Katelnik's corner has been told by the referee to keep quiet, stop shouting instructions, but they can see the title slipping away here. He's trying to retain it, though, desperately, Katelnik, and he did get Gavin Race very late on in the 12th of their fight, but he dominated for large parts of that one, and he hasn't here. Yeah, he'd already broken the uh, Gavin Rees down. Certainly has not even come close to doing that with Amir Khan. <laughs> Left hand still, threatening Katelnik. Khan covers up, tiring on the back foot. Just signs that he might have to hold on for a last round blitz from Katelnik. The 12th will be interesting. You're doing great. Stay focused. No problem. You stay focused. Three minutes, OK? Now, three minutes. Now, listen. Listen. He's going to come like a train. A fascinating insight as Amir Khan goes out for the final round. He is within touching distance. Three minutes away from the coronation, from surely being crowned the world champion. Andreas Katelnik gets a right hand in in the first 15 seconds of the last session. I mean, you don't want to change too much what Amir's doing. You don't want him to switch off to start thinking about the bell. You want him to keep boxing the way he's been boxing, but just a little more thought and defence because it's desperation time for Katelnik. He can spoil, he doesn't need to look good in this round. He can mess about, he can spoil, he can do what he likes. Just don't get tagged cleanly. He's still got something in the legs, but he's left it very, very late. Here he comes, Katelnik. Khan swaying out of the way. Yeah, and that's dangerous, pulling back from punches like that with the hands down. Thankfully got away with that. Good shots. Katelnik left his chin unguarded. Well, he has to take the chances now. Just has to throw caution to the wind. Just go for it. He needs a knockout, and everybody knows it. Standing at times with him, Amir Khan. And there's electricity in this MEN arena where he's enjoyed his wor best night against Barrera and his worst against Prescott. This would overdo everything in his career so far, Khan. Just over a minute to go. See, you would have expected Katelnik to be a bit smarter with his attacks, but he's open. Khan just wants to get that chin down, the hands up, and see this through. And there the jabs from Khan that Freddie Rage wanted. Katelnik brave, trying desperately to somehow cling on to his title, but it is slipping away. And it's heading to Britain. Half a minute away. Less left in the legs of Khan. But defence is still OK. As the seconds tick away, the jab comes out again, which has been brilliant. A terrific technical performance from Amir Khan, who followed the game plan and will be the world and waterweight champion. Have no doubts. The crowd rise. And maybe we do have a new star for British boxing.
Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge of Greenside, Juan Garcia Reyes scores about 120 to 108. Judges Ome Omison and Jean-François Topin scores about 118 to 111. All three in favor of the winner, the new WBA Light Welterweight Champion of the World, The boyhood dream is reality. Amir Khan is a world champion 10 months on from that Bradis Prescott nightmare. What an amazing rehabilitation. A 43-year-old Archie Moore in black trunks moves across the ring to take on the dancing master Cassius Clay. Cassius has predicted that he will knock out ageless Archie in four rounds. All of the newspaper people are wondering whether Clay can make his prediction come true. Archie Moore has been a professional fighter since 1936. That makes this the 26th year Archie has been thrilling ring audiences all over the world. Archie holds the all-time knockout record previously held by Young Stribling. 106 professional fighters failed to go the limit with this sharp-punching Archie Moore, a record that seems to be completely out of reach of future professional fighters. Clay moving well, boxing sharply. The brilliant young Cassius Clay won the 1960 National AAU and National Golden Glove heavyweight titles. In addition, he also won the Olympic light heavyweight crown that same year. Since turning professional two years ago, Clay has had 15 fights, winning them all, 12 by knockout. In round two, Moore is going to have to attempt to corner the endlessly moving young Cassius Clay. Clay seems very confident, taking pot shots at Archie Moore. Moore covering up. Moore weighed in at 191 pounds this evening. That's much heavier than the normal weight that Archie fights at. Those are stinging punches by Clay. Archie won the light heavyweight championship in 1952, 10 years ago, when he took a unanimous 15-round decision from champion Joey Maxim in St. Louis. Archie has defended the light heavyweight title eight times of which seven of the challengers were flattened before the finish.
Cassius Clay in white trunks seems to have taken over here in round three. Cassius is pot shotting. Young Clay has waded right into the middle of the leading heavyweight contenders by flattening the highly ranked Alex Mitta. Also, fourth ranked Willie Bezmanov failed to go the distance with Clay last year. At the tender age of 20, Cassius Clay is serving notice to heavyweight champion Sonny Liston that there is a new and exciting bolt of lightning in the heavyweight division. It's all clay here in round three. Cassius seems to be playing with Archie. Sharp, stinging punches rock more. Moore's in trouble. Clay pouring it on here in round three. Cassius seems to have the fight in complete control. And there's the end of round three, a big clay round. And this is the stanza Clay has predicted that he'd knock out Archie. He's been right in all of his predictions prior to this fight. Can Clay do it here in round four? Sharp, stinging punches by Cassius Clay. Play looking for that open. Moore pressing forward, trying to get in that one big punch to take Clay out of there. Ripping punches by Clay, and Moore goes down. Cassius raises his hands over his head. Courageously, Archie gets to his feet. Moore is sent to the canvas again by a barrage of punches. For the second time, Archie gets to his feet to face the inevitable. Ripping punches by Cassius Clay, and it's all over. Clay wins by a fourth round knockout, as predicted. It looks like this exciting 20-year-old is on his way to the heavyweight championship.
Boucher from the now familiar red and white of his adopted Canada. And Lochran, well, what else? Green and white. Now we were talking to Freddie King, Lochran's trainer, before the fight. He said the battle plan for the first three, four rounds, just to stay with him. Just draw the jab a little bit, hold the center of the ring, work the body. I think that could be a real good ploy for Eamon, is, is to, to definitely work the body. And the reason, in the visits I've seen of Boucher, Mickey Hughes did hurt him with a body shot downstairs. And um, I know he's a good solid pro and he'll be in great shape, but Lofren is a, is a wicked body puncher. I've got to say that Lochran looks looks a weight above Boucher. They're both coming at 10-6 this afternoon. Both obviously in great shape, but Eamon really does look big. I mean, Eamon, Eamon Lochran looks like a light middle. But, uh, as you say, they're both inside the, the welterweight championship limit, 10-7. I think the ring is um, to Eamon's advantage. It's, it's a small ring, so if Boucher is planning on a running mission, Eamon hasn't got to run too far to catch him, but at the moment, they're just sorting out one another and looking to see who's going to be the governor. Well, we saw against Mickey Hughes that Boucher can handle a big puncher. They don't come any bigger than Mickey Hughes in that department. This is a good start by Lockham. It certainly give the champion, Boucher, room for fall because he's been picked up by one or two good shots. So head and body. You know, it's very early days in a 12-round contest. Well, this is this is a good opening by Lockwood. Let's not get too carried away, but uh, it is a good start by the Irishman. You know, as we've already stated, Dave, this is Eamon's big chance tonight, and he, he'll probably box above anything he's ever produced or thought he was capable of producing in his past. But as, as you say, Jimmy, I think the key, if Lochran is going to win this fight, I think the key will be the body shots, because he's a, a devastating body puncher. Yeah, that's what I'd like to see him really operate on, and especially early in the contest, the first half a dozen rounds, really sinking body shots home, and up the pace for the champion. Oh, that was a good left from Lochran. He's and, hurt. And Boucher is hurt. He's caught him in the eye, I think, but he's, he's definitely hurt him. This is a real surprise. Boucher blinking furiously. That was Lochran's round, all right, making no mistake. A big round as well. <laughs> round two. I think you're going to see the championship material that Boucher possesses here because he's going to try and gain respect out of Lochran now. I'm sure he's going to try and, I've got to use the word, he's going to try and spank him. Well, he's, he's been in, we're talking about he's been in with big punches, he's been in with Mickey Hughes, he's, he's been in with, with Sean Sullivan. And, um, he was a great fighter. And, and Sean Sullivan, <laughs> Sean didn't, O'Sullivan. Even, didn't even last two rounds, Sean O'Sullivan, yeah, didn't even last two rounds with Boucher. Loughran at the moment is absolutely buzzing, he's seen he's hurt the champion, he can almost taste the sweet smell of victory. He yeah. needs to remember that Bush is a class act. Freddie King's battle player might go out the window if, uh, if he gets much more success. The success can be a heady drug. He just needs to show experience that he hasn't actually gained as of yet and stay nice and cool and just go about his work in a nice professional manner. Very strong, Loughran, and Boucher's appreciating just how strong as they're going up close, unloading shots on one another. It's going to be a good, tough fight. Boucher, nine years older than his opponent tonight. Also nine years more experience. Oh, that's, that's right. Can Eamon, can Eamon do what 
Gary Jacobs, Kurt Lang, Mickey Hughes and Robert Wright have fouled and take this title. That was a little low, Bush. Adrian Morgan. This has a word with Lochran, that left was a little bit low. Credit to Boucher, did not make a meal of it. Yeah, he's a good pro. Eamon's getting home with some good shots. He hey. certainly ain't overawed Eamon often. He's gone about his task with absolute vigour. He really is firing on all cylinders. to the body there from Boucher. And the champion showing true class in the final exchanges of that second round. Round three. He's Main event on Screen Sport tonight on Pro Box and Doncaster. Eamon Lochran in the green and white challenging. Donovan Boucher in the red and white for the World Away Championship of the Commonwealth. And Lochran is putting up a good fight so far. I think these, these early rounds, Dave, could, um, you know, if this fight's to go, go to 12 round distance, these early rounds could be vital. Here comes Boucher. I think he's had enough of getting clipped and clubbered. Another young challenger in the opening couple of rounds. That left up from the body that Eamon's employing. Is a classic. We'll throw back to the old Barry McGuigan days, eh? <laughs> I bet he's watching tonight, is Barry. Cracking left up. There it is. He's got to keep sinking it in and doubling it up. Eamon looks very, very relaxed. He doesn't seem to be expending unwanted energy. He's picking his shots, letting them go, and having a little breather, probably thinking about the distance. You know, I often go on about the distance, as, as I've used before, that like a marathon runner, you don't know you can do it until you've accomplished it, and it'll be in the back of Eamon's mind, can I do 12 rounds? It's certainly showing. Boucher's in big trouble. He is. He's gone. He's gone. A count of seven. The champion in enormous trouble. And through the ropes. That's a low burst. He won't recover from that. I'll be surprised if he does. The count is five. As tough as the champion he is, Lofgren's got the title there. To the title right now. is going to change hands any minute. The referee's going to stop minute. this. Excited Barry Earn and Freddie King going to show just how pleased they are because he's really upset the apple cart there. That is one of the biggest upsets in world boxing this year. I kid you not. Unbelievable. I kid you not. I've heard a little whisper that him and the big punch in Darren Dyer might get it on. What a great fight that would be for the punters. is beside himself with joy. He's arrived, <laughs> he's arrived as I stated earlier he would, if he could pull it off tonight as a world-class campaigner. Tremendous. And I'll tell you, Freddie King's a bit chuffed as well. There's, there's Eamon Lockwood right above Freddie us. Freddie King has got every right to be pleased. Freddie King. King. What a tremendous a performance. Grin splitting his face. And Boucher, just looking at him sitting Boucher on his stool there. I cannot believe it. He really is absolutely shell-shocked. Well, this is worth several more looks. This is quality. This is quality. There you see him going with a one-two, coming back with a left hook, and there you see it. The effect is devastating. Boucher is all but out. 
But he gets up, he shows his grit as a champion, but Eamon ain't going to let him off the hook now, and he's unloading. Look at this, see. right through the ropes, my the, goodness! The power of Eamon Lockham oh. was up there for all to see tonight. And make no mistake about that, he has stopped a world-class fighter in style. There's a new kid on the welterweight scene, because this is a young little lion. Tremendous finish from Eamon Lockham. Jake Rodriguez in the orange trunks. Bernal Whitaker in the silver trunks with black trim. And when you stop and think about it, Tony, here's a man in the last seven years has won six titles, defended them 13 times, the various titles, and had six non-title fights. He's fought so many guys who went on to win titles after he fought them. I mean, he, does, he doesn't fight pushovers. It's interesting. Both guys are southpaws, so it's a battle of right jabs right now. Purnell just takes his time. He just tries to figure you out to see where you're coming from, what you got, and then he just figures out how to beat you. I must correct myself on the trunks of Purnell Whitaker. They're not silver, they're lavender. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a new color in boxing. We don't, we don't get many lavenders. <laughs> Only Purnell Whitaker could wear lavender trunks. <laughs> First round action. Already Whitaker's tried throwing the, the, the left, the straight left, left uppercut. Whitaker Good jabs. Working that right jab. I remember one time Tony Whitaker telling me he lived by the jab. In fact, of all the fighters I've seen, he probably has used the jab more effectively than anybody I've ever seen. It's the number one weapon in boxing. It has always been the number one weapon, but people get away from it. The left hand sets up so many other punches. The left hook, the right hand. Look at the eyes of Pernell Whitaker. It's almost like he's a hawk or a falcon just looking at prey. When do I swoop down on him? I suspect that one attribute he has, which I don't believe anybody's ever tested, I think he probably has good peripheral vision. Yeah. He sees things wider than most fighters, which allows him to do some of the things he does. And one thing he does do is, is to suddenly do a 360, come around in front of a fighter, leaving the fighter bewildered. People forget what a good defensive fighter Pernell Whitaker is. The way he's, he's, he's fighting flat-footed and putting some power behind his punches, it looks like Pernell's trying to go for a knockout. Last six fights, he's been contented to go 12 rounds. Now, Jake got in a, a shot to the jaw then. Didn't do a lot of damage, but it, it, it lets Purnell know, hey, I'm here. I would agree, Tony. Purnell seems to be hitting with more authority. He's down on his feet, not up on his toes. He's, he's, he's planting himself. He's walking over, but then he plants himself and throws his shots. He's keeping his hips underneath. And transfers that power from his lower body. I want to see him turn that left from over to under. If he throws that as an uppercut, might catch Jake right on the chin. Now Jake is keeping his right hand a little bit too low, leaving himself open for Whitaker's counter straight left and left uppercut if he turns it that way. Rodriguez is corner telling him moments ago in the corner, keep your hands up. Every time Whitaker throws a jab, you lower your hands. Let's see if he heeds that message. Oh, solid right jab. Whitaker's jab is just, and he comes with a left cross. 
Jake can also take a punch. <laughs> oh, yeah. What Jake should be trying to do is he, get, he has to take one of those or two of those jabs to get inside and work Purnell's body. Nobody works Purnell's body because they're so busy dealing with his left jab. But that's what he should try and do. Here's some countering by Jake. And Purnell in a crafty move. Grabs Jake's arm, lets go, and punches him to the midsection. Let's see if he shoots an uppercut. Good left hand. Jake walked into that last punch. Sure did. He's just not quick enough to get out of the way because Purnell is so quick. You see that, Jam? Oh, textbook, another look one. Look at that. Three. It's so good four, to see a five. fighter use that. Why don't fighters use it in this day and age? I don't know. They think big knockouts sell tickets. But there comes a time when you can't use that power, and you got to use the basics, and that's the jab. You can really get your opponent's attention <laughs> with a good jab. Yes, you can. And he executes it mechanically very well, too. Shoots it out from his side. Doesn't wing it. Rodriguez is the kind of fighter, Tony, that you really are glad that he won a title. Even, yeah. though, he, even though he doesn't hold it. He's the kind of guy that people would say, oh, he'd never hold a title. There's a good, a good right shot. left. Now, Purnell usually responds to things like that. He wants to show, oh, yeah, you hit me? Let me show you what I can do. That may be one of the best combinations Jake's scored with tonight. Oh, yeah. When, when you're being outgunned 10 to 1, you have to find out something that's good. That was a good shot by Jake, but Purnell just throws so many punches and is so accurate. Under a minute remaining in round four. See, he measured with his right hand and then doubled it. In a different type of fighter, he would counter Purnell, but he can't. Another good exchange. Whitaker catches him with a right and a left. Whitaker's starting to come on. Jake has a tired look on his face. I think it's frustration more than anything else. Jake has that hard, chiseled face features. Uh-huh. And this is round four. All done. Bell, bell. You know, it's an interesting fight. It, it, it's still a chess match. But Jake is losing his pawns as this fight goes on. And Whitaker is smiling. Starting to bring that left from under. Because Jake countered with a left. And for a moment got Purnell's attention. Halfway through round five. Uh, Jake missed a punch and walked into one. That's called, that's called capitalizing on your opponent's mistake. Jake just lost another pawn. <laughs> uh, Jake is in the corner, and he drops his arms. I don't know whether that's supposed to be a deception or what. <laughs> <laughs> Under a minute. Round five. Jake's face starting to show a little wear and tear. Well, Jake has those very high that cheekbones. When they get hit a lot, they swell a little bit, they show up. He uh, just great, took a, great. Just took a right hand from Whitaker. Nice shot. Purnell using everything in the arsenal right now. But look at his defense when he's right in front of him. 
Whitaker also looks a little more muscular than he, he has does. in the past. Good point. And he's uh, hitting with more authority as we end round five. Nice flurry by Jake, but a lot of it was picked off. Good shot by Purnell. To the side of Jake's head. Halfway through round six. Slams a right to the body. Comes up Carter's with the left. I think he's hurting him now. Left hook. Down he goes. You know, Tony, he he dissected Jake at that point where the shot, the left of the body, right to the head. Left of the body, right to the head. I mean, it per was... Pernell's corner is upset because he, Jake walked away from the referee, turned his back, which gave him more time. You either fight or you stop it. Slick move, but the, the, the new Duval was very upset in Pernell's corner. Good shot to the body. Pernell has found his weakness. You can't take him out to the head, so he's... A, He's changing his offense to go to his body, just like Trinidad did. Here's that left of the body. Left of the body, and when Jake drops his arms, he hits him with a right. Oh, that was a classic shot. A thunderous right hand to the midsection. And again, Jake is down. I think that's about it. I don't think he's going to get up from that. It's over. Hell of a performance by Purnell. Comes over the top of the left. Right to the his whole, whole body shakes when he hits him to the body. The official time, two minutes, 45 seconds of round number six. Referee Frank Cappuccino reaches the 10 count. The winner by knockout victory and still WBC welterweight Champion of the world, Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker. That's it for this episode of the Boxing Files from KOTV Classics. Until next time, bye bye for now.